Hi, my name is Daryl Gangadu. I'm the director of Adventist Review Media Lab. While Adventist Review Ministries is the oldest media ministry of our church, starting in 1849, it definitely is one of the most innovative and forward-thinking entities of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The review comprises of three editorial brands, Adventist World or Adventist Journey in North America, Adventist Review as a magazine itself, and Kids View. It also comprises of three other platforms, Adventist Review Television, AR Audio, and the Media Lab, which is more of an experimental platform. One of the first projects that uh, Adventist Review Media Lab was involved with in 2018 was something for Kids View. Let me show you. In the April edition of 2018, we decided to start a whole series on augmented reality. In the magazine, it invites you to download a free app called Kids View AR, and once, that's, once that app is downloaded, if you launch the app and point your mobile device to the magazine, what will pop out of the magazine is a 3D view of uh, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, for subsequent months, we had different 3D objects that we would feature. Pretty cool, huh? The kids really loved it. If you're not a kid, but would still like to try that experience, go to kidsview.com slash app, download the appropriate app for your mobile device, and use these target images to try augmented reality. In the industry, we hear often of the concept of mobile first. Um, however, with uh, the Media Lab, we thought of a different strategy, and we thought of the concept of kids first, on mobile. One other uh, product we did in augmented reality was for a sister company of ours called Voice of Prophecy. They do a product called Discovery Mountain, and it is a weekly podcast, and it features um, a, uh, an airplane in there called Blue Birdie. And let me show you uh, how, uh, what we built for them. So as you pull out um, a CD uh, or any logos of Discovery Mountain, if you were to um, use the same app that uh, we talked about earlier, the Kids View app, and scan that CD, what you'd get is the little airplane, Blue Birdie, sitting on the CD. You can actually go right inside the plane and see Jake inside. We also turned this plane into a full uh, flight simulator. And uh, let me show you how we built it.
this period of pandemic has really changed the way churches meet worldwide. But often, turmoil is a bedrock of innovation. This pandemic is no different for Adventist Review Media Lab. We've been developing a platform that is kind of like the intersection between a live stream sermon, an interactive Zoom conference, a Shakespeare theater play, and virtual reality to come together and create a new platform that allows for participatory sermons. Promenade theater was a style that William Shakespeare um, liked to dabble in. Rather than having his audience all sit in the pews and watching what's going on on stage, he'd invite some of them to participate in the play. And uh, they would walk around among the actual actors and, uh, and really be part of the storyline. One of the uh, more recent uh, use of this technique um, has been by the National uh, Theatre of Wales, producing a show called The Passion. And uh, uh, it took place on several locations in the Welsh town of Port Talbot, and it was quite a success. There's also been Adventist productions using the Promenade Theatre technique, like this one in Melbourne, Australia, that happens every year. It's called The Road to Bethlehem. Now, imagine a platform that would allow the preacher to take his or her audience in virtual reality to anywhere in the biblical narrative, from wading in the River Nile in Egypt and defining the basket of Moses, being on the side of a hill looking down the valley and seeing Goliath on the other side taunting the Israelites or walking up and down a busy street in Babylon and encountering Daniel and even participating in some of the dreams that he had, re he had received, where the preacher can pause life going on around him and his group and uh, take life lessons from uh, objects and uh, sceneries that surrounds them, or send his audience on a scavenger hunt to find, let's say, Moses' basket. The online participants, with the appropriate gear, would be able to see and hear the other participants, or avatars, and uh, strike a conversation with them. And it doesn't matter if they are next door or geographically very distant, irrespective of confinements. We call this promenade sermons. We ran one recently for the 70th anniversary of the Pathfinder movement, and let me show you a couple of snippets from it. Oh! Oh! Welcome! Welcome! <gasps> Where's my scarf? Hey! Anybody saw a Pathfinder scarf? No, no, no! That's not a Pathfinder scarf! <clears throat> well, <clears throat> If you're wondering what I'm doing on this very high scaffolding, I'm wondering the same. But the sad story is that this is the only way I can show you what we're really preparing for you for the 19th of September, the celebration of the World Pathfinder Day. We just built this massive sports hall for you. And this is the only world event for which you will not need a visa, or you will not need to stay for months and years to make it. Mic test, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. All you will have to do is just actually join us live on a date. And if you're wondering about the times, just make sure you check the description of this video. Yeah, that's right. It's a beautiful place. Well, and just in case you're wondering uh, who built this, well, uh, it is Adventist Review Media Lab. <clears throat> I didn't even know they're in a building business. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, better safe than sorry. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, my friends, See you on Sabbath. Helmets are not needed.
create these kinds of environments, it requires quite a powerful machine. I'd recommend a system that runs uh, a couple of the latest Intel i9 CPUs, or the latest AMDs will do. Also, at least 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, those old graphics cards, well, they will just not do. We'll need something um, new uh, from either NVIDIA or AMD Radeon, and uh, Let's just go over to the headquarters of NVIDIA and see what we can get from them. So I just came back from the NVIDIA headquarters office with a brand new GeForce RTX 3000 series graphics card. It is amazing, obviously for games and ray tracing and so on, but it's amazing for what we can do with it in virtual cinema production. So come with me. Uh, back to my lab and I'll show you what we can do with it. Equipped with these tools, we're now able to delve into a relatively new genre called machinima. Now machinima is uh, uh, the use of game assets to create a real cinematic uh, realism. And um, if you are interested in signing up for uh, that tool, um, go to nvidia.com slash machinima. The technique uses uh, primarily simulation of light, physics, and uh, material, and all combined with artificial intelligence renders something absolutely realistic. So the product that I did for the Pathfinders, for the 70th anniversary of Pathfinders, I used this technique, an environment in the latest version of Unreal 4. However, a new version of Unreal 5 engine is about to come out, and the amount of realism and the amount of polygons that it can handle is absolutely amazing. Here's a little demo of uh, what Unreal 5 will be able to uh, do for us. Much of what you see was built with Quixel Megascan assets. But instead of using the game versions, we use the cinematic versions, which would typically only be used in film. There are around a million triangles each. And thanks to virtual texturing, they all use 8K textures as well. There are over a billion triangles of source geometry in each frame that Nanite crunches down losslessly to around 20 million drawn triangles. What does that many triangles look like? This isn't noise. These are the triangles, each a different color, most are so small that they look like noise. Sound field rendering allows us to record and playback spatialized audio. All of this adds up to a more immersive experience. This swarm of bats was created with our Niagara effects system. We've also added a ton of new functionality to run fluid simulations like you see in the water below. The demo runs on our chaos physics system. Here we are using it to accurately simulate the rigid bodies of the falling rocks and the cloth of her scarf. <laughs> Now that the environment is so complex, we've needed to greatly improve our animation systems to adapt. For the character to more realistically interact with the environment, we've added the ability to trigger seamless contextual animation events, like her hand on the door. Sounds promising. You have fully dynamic lighting and global illumination. And this doesn't need to be constrained to small rooms. It can stretch all the way to the horizon. Right, with these tools, let's go ahead and do a simple project together. Let's uh, say we wanted to build a virtual church for a game or a movie, a documentary, or even a promenade sermon experience. So what we would do is use a tool like SketchUp to uh, build a foundation. 
and let's keep it simple but yet artistically appealing with uh, using those triangles and duplicating them so it makes uh, uh, quite a nice shape. Now that our church is uh, more or less built, uh, let's make sure we've got a potluck room downstairs and a few meeting rooms and the main church hall is quite spacious and luminous. So for anyone familiar with any architectural software, uh, CAD drawing or even something simple like, simple like SketchUp, that should be a pretty easy process to build a structure. But this building now uh, really does not look very realistic. What we're going to do now is take this building and plot it inside an environment that will bring it to life. Now we can add a whole bunch of things around, like let's say for example we would like to have some uh, cows grazing in front of the church. So let's bring in a cow here, another cow there, we'll rotate this cow this way, and uh, let's have some butterflies flying in the field, that's good. Now we can sculpt the land as well, so we'll make a little bump here. Oops, now the car is in the ground, um, but we can adjust that. So let's make a bump, uh, sort of like that. But let's adjust the cow again, so it is more natural uh, and not buried underground. Poor cow. So. There we go, that's better, and this one as well, there we go. And um, we can adjust for quite a few things, including weather. If I dial it to a uh, rainy day, oh, let's have a little bit of sun nonetheless, but we can change the season for sure, and we can dial this to the middle of winter and if we dial it to rain it's going to show snow. Those cows must be freezing. Okay, and it's accurate enough to recognize that uh, some areas might not have snow underneath so this bench, for example, if I turn it around, I can see that the snow does accumulate on it. But uh, it does look a lot more natural than what uh, SketchUp would offer us. Poor cows. So on top of the weather, we can also adjust uh, for the time of day. So let's dial this to being the middle of the night. Location, and I can dial this so it, the sun sets. Oh, that's a nice golden light here. And the moon comes up on the other side. All right, so this is 10 p.m. And uh, if we look up, we should see the moon in the sky. You can see the clouds moving by. Yeah. And if I go inside the church, the light... is very different than if it was early morning, like 7 a.m. Furthermore, I can have these avatars, uh, I can add more avatars in the system if I want to, or um, I can have user-generated avatars show up. So let's take a person that's, oh, this looks like Ellen White. Um, let's take, uh, this was a pastor, let's have this deacon come in here. Uh, he looks a bit bored, so we'll have him uh, maybe a little bit more active. Oh, let's have him sitting down. There we go, he's, dis he's not listening to the sermon. And we'll position him over here. 
So once rendered from Unreal Engine, it comes out as fully usable as a gaming or a cinematographic environment. An example of how I used this technology in merging real world people and uh, virtual reality environments is capturing Andreas, for example, on a green screen and then uh, replicating the, the person in a 3D environment with the green screen cut out. Thank you to the British Union because they have put this program together for you, for the whole world. So that tool is exactly the same as what Lucasfilm in Star Wars have been using for the latest production of The Mandalorian except that we are taking this to the next step. But let me show you a little bit on how The Mandalorian was produced using Unreal Engine. Part of what's been fun about collaborating on The Mandalorian with Lucasfilm and Disney is that we have been able to see through a few technical innovations and a few firsts that I think are gonna have a lot of impact on the way uh, television and movies are made moving forward. In partnership with ILM and Epic, we have put together a system whereby which we can have game engine, real-time render, and video wall technology coming together to create a backdrop for the big, beautiful world of Star Wars. The volume is 21 feet tall. It's 75 feet in diameter, run by seven machines, pumping the visuals onto the screen that's, that's being created in pre-production and can be on the screen within 24 hours of, of being finaled. It is extraordinary to shoot any sequence where you say, oh, this world's not quite right, let's just move it a little bit. An extraordinary number of benefits and advantages for shooting in that environment. It's mind-blowing what that tool is. We are essentially starting on a new era of media technologies that uh, sees an intersection between uh, game design, movie production, uh, visualization, and engagement. And this is all about what uh, AR Media Lab is about for Adventist Review. There's one last uh, technology that we've been working on that I'd like to share with you, and that uh, has to do with cognitive neuroscience. Everyone wants to live a long, healthy life. But how do you achieve that? And what exactly is a healthy lifestyle? What role do our choices and environment play in our overall health? How do our beliefs influence our well-being? And what does it mean to live whole? My name is John Burke, and I'm on a quest to find out. In partnership with Adventist Health, Adventist Review Television produced a docudrama on... Uh, health called the whole planet. What we wanted to find out was how engaging was the production that we made for a generic audience. So we used a methodology to understand the attention span, the emotional motivation, the memory activation, the process that was going on in the viewer's brain to help us tweak the final production optimally. As we used this technology and got more familiar with the science, we noticed that we could get even deeper in understanding or identifying confusion uh, if uh, the person was daydreaming or if they were engaging their memory activation as they were watching the clip. We ended up uh, fine-tuning some of the hardware to be able to easily capture the different brain waves uh, of a person's uh, brain activities. The higher band of frequencies is called the beta waves, and this is when you are fully engaged, thinking critically about something. And then the alpha waves are often when you're relaxing and uh, watching TV without necessarily engaging much on, on what you're watching or sipping a cup of tea. The theta waves are more active when you're doing repetitive things like, uh, for example, taking a shower or being on cruise control on, on an interstate. This happens to be also the wavelength where your brain tends to get distracted and uh, 
become in a way more creative because uh, as you're busy doing something repetitive, you know how to do it, then your brain can think about other more creative things. The delta wave is often uh, detected when a person is sound asleep. So the method that we're using to detect this is called LORETA. It stands for Low Resolution Electromagnetic Tomography. This is quite different from an MRI that you, you might get, a magnetic resonance system uh, that, that analyzes your brain. That's the um, science behind it. But what we've been working on is developing a method where we could grade uh, scientifically the interest of a media production based on attention level and uh, memory activation. And this has quite a lot of ramifications, of course. We can use this to analyze uh, even sermons uh, or articles and uh, so on and so forth. So that suddenly gives us a great tool to be able to scientifically analyze the products that Adventist Review produces. But we can uh, also naturally offer this as a service to any other entities that want to test their media clips through this interface. Hey Hivesters, thank you for your time. I hope this was informative, invigorating, and uplifting. Get ready for convergence in the production tools for gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality, and tomorrow's movie and TV studios. As you would have gathered by now, I strongly believe in evangelism through innovation. Let's keep in touch. My email is daryl at armedialab.org. Until next time, bye-bye.